This video is dedicated to an incredible artwork that is housed inside this amazing structure. Now whether this is Tartarian or whenever this was built is kind of a mystery. I looked on the Jesuit homepage and this is the St. Ignazio Church in Rome, but the history about it is very sketchy and it doesn't tell too much. But inside this building is one of the greatest artworks of all time that I've ever really seen. The best illusion. I love illusions and this is one of the best. But first, here's a quote by George Orwell about every record has been destroyed or falsified, every book rewritten, every picture has been repainted, every statue and street building has been renamed, every date has been altered, and the process is continuing day by day and minute by minute. History has stopped. Nothing exists except an endless present in which the party is always right. And we are seeing this now on a massive level, and it's always been happening. So the artist I'm going to talk about is Andrea Pozzo, who is unbelievable. From around the 1600s to the early 1700s, he lived in Rome, painted all over the place, did some amazing things, and was a master in architecture. Kind of like Piranesi, except I think this guy took it to a different level and did more physical things than... Um, Piranesi, more structural things. So here's this artwork, The Triumph of St. Ignatius. So now this artwork has a lot of mystery around it and it's just absolutely unbelievable. When you stand in the center on a star, kind of like the Star of Ishtar, this is the central point underneath this and it forms a complete illusion that makes it look like the building itself is expanding into the heavens and the building architecture is continuing and there's just circlings of gods and all these angels and floating beings and clouds and there are so many mysteries around this thing which is incredible and it's true um, it, what they say is that it's dedicated to Saint Ignatius of Loyola who was a Jesuit missionary who really kind of formed the Jesuits and decided to uh, go against the Protestant Reformation by really digging in and becoming a soldier of the church basically. So the Jesuits were formed and this is supposedly an artwork dedicated to him. Now here comes where the renaming of the art and repurposing of art comes into play which I think might be um, on display here. And Now this is the America section. So this, this whole artwork is broken up into the four continents, which is supposedly where they wanted to spread Je Jesuit practices. But there's a lot of interesting things here, like look at Lady Liberty or this woman in the red, whether it's Judith or one of the ancient stories or whoever it's supposed to represent. This is talking about America in the early, and this was drawn in the mid-1600s, mid to late 1600s pre-1776 and there is a Lady Liberty here, red, white and blue, who is just kind of attacking these, these godlike things and she's sitting on a tiger-like being which is kind of reminiscent of Florida and as well as the parrots and other tropical birds that are around her which makes me wonder about the Florida Tartarian history and what was really here in America before. Like this is very well established. All four of these continents are established and the Americas is very prominent there. Not as if it was from an ancient um, uh, Native American past with zero technology, zero architecture. It's like points to something a lot different. And this is the Europa section, which is also very interesting as the woman is on a horse. Each one of the continents is represented by a woman of some form. Some say that there are ancient stories, whether it's Yael of, um, of a Hebrew origin or uh, Judith and Holofernes in the time of Nebuchadnezzar in the 600s BC. So all these kind of things are depicting all these stories that are really old from each of these continents and from all over and there's, how is that connected to Saint Ignatius of Loyola? I'm not really sure, in the Jesuit mission. So I'm wondering if some of this artwork was repurposed over time or if this, you know, if this building was really old, was Tartarian, you know, maybe this artwork started at one point and was repurposed and then people learned perspective and different things from this artwork, which would be by dissecting it, by taking it down, you know, if this was from some other culture, some other ancients, then some very smart artists of the day could easily reverse engineer it and figure out a lot of perspective techniques based on these artworks. And these people were masters. And I flipped this or whatever, this is Asia, so you can see it a little better. And she is on a camel this time and the woman is always very colorful and very fully clothed while the men are always kind of just very pretty much naked and in robes then there's also a lot of cherubs and angels around there's birds there's different flowers and see this building just seems to keep going and there's some parts I'll show you later which make it look like it maybe have have been different at one point in time 
but it's just a very mysterious artwork, really prominently displaying these four continents and showing something that's just very, very interesting. And here is Africa over here with the woman at the top, and she is on a giant lizard beam, and she's holding an elephant tusk in her hand, which, you know, shows, like, uh, that that's been going on for since the, since for so long, and that just all the treasures of that land and all the different resources you know each continent here that's represented is very unique to that people and probably a lot more telling than we can really understand and it has to make you wonder what really inspired all this artwork there's so much artwork that's like this and that depicts these angels and floating in the clouds and when you're a young kid and you think of heaven and you think of another world you almost look in the clouds I used to always look in the clouds especially in planes or even on long drives to try and find and see beings that were in the clouds like that's it's almost like an innate young thing. Either that or it's a very immature thought, but I think it's a very primeval thought, pa pa taking us back to our ancient past of a time when maybe we knew how to control the ether, we knew how to float, like we knew how to get up there and do these things, you know, maybe there were beings in the clouds, maybe there were gods that could fly, maybe there were other beings that could control that stuff. I have no idea, but we have to think about it because it is everywhere in this art. And it's all in the art that we have been allowed to see. God knows what's in the art that is in secret places. Now, so on the left and right side of the uh, of this drawing, you can see that this there's sky. So it clearly ends. The building that they're drawing, that Pozzo's drawing, clearly ends on these sides. But in the middle, it seems a little different. When you look in, you can see some kind of background imagery here. Like there seems to be a person, there's a figure in the background there that points to this building maybe going higher, almost like a Tower of Babel style building. And maybe that was their purpose. Maybe at one point they did have buildings that went up to a place where gravity was less or you could, you could float, you could tap into the ether or something. Maybe that was their point of building these massive buildings and stuff could be existing very underground us for have been built, they could have been building this for thousands and millions of years, different species, different beings. And But look at this, the guy in the very center there, I wonder who that is. Like, is he on a cloud? Are they on a, uh, a building? Does the building extend out in the middle? And this is the center kind of piece where Jesus in the middle and the gods, you know, they're kind of, they're the center technically, but all the light rays are emanating from St. Ignatius of Loyola, who murdered a lot of people when he was young. He was a soldier, he has a very interesting history, and he repented and learned a lot after his uh, military service, but he was still a kind of a violent guy, not the type of guy who you'd think God would personally shine down upon, no matter how much he promoted uh, his likeness. And this is a picture by Peter Paul Rubens of him as well, and uh, kind of a different representation, it almost looks like a different person than in the Pozzo drawing, and you know, there's a thing about art being repurposed, you can rename anyone and tell about the history. You know, the history is very brief on this. And so you really can. That's the thing about history is that everything can be rewritten with just a couple little things of text. And it all talks about him reflecting the divine light. And um, that's what this angel appears to be holding, kind of a reflector that's reflecting his divine light to some of the continents. But also it kind of brings to mind the sun simulator theory. And, you know, maybe that there is some divine light above that and there's a sun reflector that's shining and that's what we see as the sun. This person's gold. There, they, they could be, it's got the symbol of the Jesuits, I believe this kind of on top with the fact that the Society of Jesus is a sun symbol. Very interesting in, in, the, in the whole concept of a sun simulator or the sun being something artificial that represents some powerful divine light that's beyond. Or maybe at the top of Mount Maru, this maybe our sun is reflecting that light at that giant center of our world. We never, we don't know. I don't trust NASA and this is really the extent of the history on the Jesuit webpage for that church. It tells really nothing. And if you read this, it really just doesn't explain where that building came from. It just explains how it stuff inevitably got there. Very weak, incredibly weak definition of history. You know, that's the thing. A lot of people try to, to tell a giant, massive, incredibly detailed and incredibly elaborate history with just a few sentences. And that doesn't cut it for me. Everything kind of has to be seen from all angles otherwise it's it's just how can you how can you really be a judge you know if, if you wouldn't convict someone if there's a shred of doubt and I wouldn't totally believe something if there's shreds of doubt and there's shreds of doubt all over the place so this is one of those paintings again just I included from the past which shows um, like candlelight they always talk about candlelight back in this time but yet how did these people paint these things how can you paint this how can you carve all these things by candlelight and then put it up there 
Like, you'd have to work amazingly detailed. Upside down, you'd get a headache, your neck would hurt. You'd have to, it would be, it would be a nauseating to, and, and plus, like, think about Norman Rockwell and all those people who, when they paint people, they look at actual figures. These guys are painting angelic figures that are perfect, anatom anatomically perfect, and they're doing it on top of giant buildings. Like, they, they can't look at models while they're doing this. They can't look at photos, because those supposedly didn't exist, although I believe they did, with Kim and Obscura. But how did they do this? You know, and I, I and Andrea Pozzo's book is amazing, so I believe he's capable of doing this stuff. But how? How could they do it? And this is what it looks like from the roof. If you were to look above from the outside, just a thin little thing like that, a thin little ovally shaped. And here are some clips from the book, that um, amazing pictorum, let's see, what's it called? Perspecta Pictorum et Architectorum by Pozzo. And these things are amazing. You know, they show whether he was reverse engineering them or whether he was um, d dis describing them, drawing what he sees and showing the perspective and illustrating from that. And, and that's kind of what I believe, you know. Maybe there were people at his time who could build these things. Maybe this is from a long time ago. But these drawings are so precise, they almost look like they were drawn in modern-day computer programs, like architectural programs that are designed now. They're perfect. And that looks just like that other, that other one, the St. Ignatio's Church. So... You know, it's very possible that he created this stuff, but he also could have been dissecting it from that in reverse engineering. And this is amazing, these star forts. These are at the last few pages of his 488-page book, star forts, clear star forts. Now, this really shows that, you know, he, he, these things were around for a long time. They had an importance. They had a purpose. It was known at this time. These people knew it. It was something amazing, or, or it was being hidden in, from them during their lifetime, and they were trying to figure it out. But, and now it's up to us. Our true history and timeline has been decimated, and we have to piece it together. It is so easy for people to rewrite it, and we need to figure it out. But these structures, these star forts, these buildings, they lead to something. They point us somewhere. And this is called Miracle of Mysteries because there are so many mysteries, it is almost overwhelming. It is absolutely amazing how many different things are out there, how many different architectures, how many different thoughts, how many different ancient texts, how many different spiritual beliefs, ancient stories, you know, and there might be truth to these. How can you ever deny that the ancient cultures were like just complete right, like could have some accuracy and some, some basis and truth, like to, to put them all off as myth and fairy tale is just does not seem right, especially with all this magical art. These people were so talented, so skilled, and they were dedicating their time, their so much time to these visions, so they really must have believed in it. There must be some pieces that we are all missing, especially in this one with the whole America being very well established. You know, America was clearly here and clearly very successful for a long time. And, and I think all these continents were bridged together. I bet they all knew each other long before Columbus and they, they were known, they traded with each other, they created designs together, they did all this stuff. And you have to factor in that these are the collections that we see, the stuff that's remaining. A lot of these buildings burnt down, there could have been more of these of these ceilings that depicted stuff like this. And also all the lot, art that got looted throughout time, it's just existing in people's vaults, hidden away from reality, hidden away from the uh, official history of art, you know. All the stuff that we see is in museums. If it's not in a museum, we don't really know about it. So that all that art could tell something totally different. We have to be on the lookout because there are some surprises in the art world. I know there are. There are some mysteries to be uncovered. And we got to keep our eyes open everywhere because this stuff's amazing. Let's find it out. And to add to that mystery, here's the sayings that are on the side. I'm not sure if they're Latin or if there's some other language, but I tried to translate them in Latin with Google, and then I tried through this other list of Latin words. And so through Google, this one says, and what do I want to be fired? And meanwhile, I came up with, and how many fly slash speed or wish, except those who wish to illuminate or ascend. So two radically different things. One's from Google, one's from a list that I translated word for word, kind of, of what I can see. This one's a little tougher to see. And so I got from Google, I got come fire art housed in tears at first, and then I kind of refined it a little bit. I got I am art fire grind on you, which is pretty interesting. And then I came up with, through that other translating method, was fire to come together at the art or citadel, polished or rounded in the altar. I have no idea if any of those translations are accurate at all, but if you have any ideas, let me know. Definitely share them. But in conclusion, I'd like to close and open how I did with one another George Orwell quote. 
And this one says, the most effective way to destroy a people is to deny and obliterate their own understanding of their history. And that's exactly what has been going on. We need to repair it, keep all the clues coming, be on the lookout. Have a great one.